Hello lovelies, I'm back today showing you how I finished off this La Belle Dame Sans Merci costume for the Foundations Revealed contest. So as you can see, some important elements are the long dramatic hooded cloak and the woodland crown that I created for this project. So I'm going to quickly show you how I made them, starting with the hooded cloak. Now, I've made quite a few cloaks and capes in my day maybe even on this channel, so it's no surprise to you that this was pretty simple and I didn't do much mocking up for this, only the hood. Basically, I took a circle skirt pattern that I had drafted for myself and made a few small adjustments. My circle skirt pattern is basically two panels that when brought together, the bottom hem circumference makes a circle. So I just narrowed this and lengthened it a bit to graduate the angle, since I wanted this to be about ankle length. I also cut it at a slight angle so that the back of the cape would be a little bit longer than the front. Just to add that drama. The main piece of interest about this is going to be the hood. And I did mock up the hood because it was a little bit different. So as you can see, I'm trying very hard to cut out this lovely cotton linen blend but my cat is also very fond of it, so having some technical difficulties here. And we had to shortly stop for a pet's break. For the hood of this, it's basically a huge square with this back triangle just cut off. Now the idea is I want it to make something inspired by some late 18th century pleated hoods I had seen. So a very, very big oversized hood that has structure by being pleated into sort of a back center. And so that's what I'm doing here. So this side that I'm cutting will be cut straight. I'm cutting with pinking shears here, which is a little slow going because they're very old, but it helps keep it from unraveling while you're working with it. So that side will be uh, sewed straight. And then the rest of the back of the hood is going to be pleated together. So I'm showing you a piece of footage of me doing the mock-up for the hood because I lost the footage of me doing the actual hood, but this will give you a good idea. This hood is only half scale of what I ended up with, as I said, big, dramatic, voluminous. But so here you can see how I'm doing that pleating. Here you can see how that hood did turn out in the finished garment. It is suitably enormous. Part two, I made a woodland crown out of pipe cleaners and washi tape and floral tape and bits of extra foliage I had laying around. So pipe cleaners are reasonably sturdy, but very flexible. So I started out by making this kind of crown shape base just based on the size of my head. I wrapped two pipe cleaners around each other for structure and then connected them to make the band. And then I set to covering it with brown floral tape. You have to kind of stretch floral tape as you use it and then press it together. And that's how it sticks. It's not just sticky like regular tape. Once the crown was covered, I could attach the antler bits. And again, these were just made from pipe cleaners. Sometimes I would use one pipe cleaner folded over itself for the shorter branches and then just connected to the longer ones, just kind of building 
as I went to create the shape I was looking for. And as I said, very flexible, very nice. So that all had to be covered, of course, with floral tape as well to keep it looking like a tree branch. From there, I could connect it to the main crown. So I had some very pretty floral washi tape. I thought that would just be like a nice touch to the overall fantastical forest aesthetic I was going for. So I just went about wrapping that on to the main crown. Then it was time to decorate. So I had a few little craft flowers that have wire in the stem, which make them pretty easy to bend to your will. So I wanted to have two up in the front and I just used more washi tape, this time pink for floral, to go and attach that to the branches and crown. It's a fairly simple technique and I actually got the inspiration for this crown from looking at Pinterest tutorials on how to make antler headbands. I think they're mostly geared towards people doing, you know, maybe Christmas kind of cosplay reindeer things or fawn cosplays for more mythological. Um, but I had the idea that if instead of putting the antler type structures on a headband, if I laid them down and just changed the shape slightly, they looked rather like tree branches, which suit my character better than antlers. I think anyway. I bought some inexpensive garlands of vines to decorate this project with. I actually have quite a few left over, so I'll be decorating my house next, it looks like. I just took a short length of this that I cut and wrapped it around the crown, so it would have this sort of vining ivy effect, which apparently in sort of Anglo-Saxon folklore, ivy is a very feminine plant, so it's suited for a queen of the woods, I think. Then it was time to use a little more floral tape to just sort of fasten the edges of everything down so it looked a little more finished, a little more seamless. And here's the finished crown. I'm quite pleased with it since it's my first experience making a headdress. Part three, how I finished up with the petticoat and overskirt. I had no idea what I was doing when it came to using tulle. I've never worked with it before. And I wanted it to have this lovely ethereal princessy sort of look, which I did not order nearly enough tulle for. So, I simply folded over what I had because it was quite long and then pleated it into a simple twill tape waistband. Here I am just sewing up the side so that it doesn't come apart. Now the double layer and the pleating gave a little bit of volume, but it wasn't nearly enough, which is why I ended up adding the petticoat to this dress. 
but I still wanted to use it as my overskirt. So here I am just adding some decorations to this with the leaf and vine garland that I used in my crown. My concept, if you will, was that she's almost sort of part of the forest. She is a protector of the woodland, so she almost is part of the forest floor. Or maybe she's just picked up leaves throughout her day while tending th to her duty. But it doesn't make her look messy, it makes her look quite like ethereal and lovely, hence the floaty white background. At least that was my idea. So I cut apart the garland so that I would have little clusters of leaves, just maybe two or three attached to a bit of vine, and then I stitched them somewhat randomly all over the skirt. I couldn't just have such a skimpy little bit of tulle as the only skirt for this project, so I, at the last minute, very quickly made a petticoat layer to go under that. So it's just a long piece of cotton wall that I added some pin tucks to the bottom. So I added four rows of one inch pin tucks with two inches in between, I think is how I mathed it out. So here I am just pinning those tucks in place. They aren't 100% perfectly crisp, probably because I didn't iron it before I stitched it. So lesson learned, your pin tucks are very particular and they probably need to be ironed first. But I think they look reasonably cute. And because I made it quite a long length of fabric, I just had a quick drawstring waist. So that cinches up the fabric, which adds pleated volume. I just have to kind of adjust that volume. I will eventually go back and put a proper waistband on this, but this was like three days before the end of the contest. So as you can see, my tucks are respectable for my first time. And it can all go under the dress to add a little extra volume and coverage. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with this costume. As you can see, it's not perfect, but I do think I achieved what I set out to do, which is to create this sort of historical, fantastical woodland lady inspired by Keats's poem. And I'm entering this contest on the apprentice level, which is their level two, because I have sewn some garments in the past, most of them for this channel, honestly, and most of them decently successful, but I am an amateur when it comes to things like corsetry and cosplay, which this project forced me to try. So it felt like I'm too advanced for a beginner, but not nearly advanced as so many of the other amazing competitors. If you want to check out some of the other awesome entries for this year's contest, follow the hashtag Foundations Revealed Contest 2021 on Instagram, and you can see just the incredible skills that people are showing off here. So my costume's done. It's not perfect and I see a million little things I'd like to change, but I'm really proud of myself and I feel like this has pushed me to the next level as a sewist, as a costumer, and I'm really glad I decided to participate this year. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more of my sewing journeys, um, please like this video to let me know and subscribe. I have a couple other big projects coming up this year, some of them also historical, some of them also maybe a little costumey, and I would love to have you along for the journey. Thank you. Bye.